Okay, well, what happened was, um, I was in the Air Force. Um, the reason why I went in the Air Force originally is because I wanted to be a pilot. Um, but 9-11 had occurred, and um, I joined, so 9-11, you know, was, of course, we know, 9-11, 2002. Um, I, I mean, 2001, I joined 9-24, 2002. So one, um, I, I, almost a year, just a little over a year from 9-11, because that really affected me. Um, so that was another reason why I really wanted to go in the military. Really wanted to serve my country um, because of what had happened with the towers. So yeah, I, interesting now because we're leaving almost the same time as my date of enlistment. We even looked at that September twenty fourth. That was my date of enlistment. We looked at that um, for our flight, but we decided to choose the thirtieth just to be safe to make sure our passports get here in time. But anyways, um, so I really loved the Air Force. Actually, I did really really well. I was having a fantastic time. Um, I I started drinking for the first time. Yeah, I had tons of friends, and I had um, a couple of uh, boyfriends. Um, but at 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 the time when this happens, I did have a boyfriend. I'll get into that. But um, I just it was the best time of my life to be honest. For at, at that point, you know, because I was I was young. I, I joined at seventeen, and it was just so much fun because I. I Grown up, you know, being kind of shy, and I just made so many friends and had so much fun. And then um, I had just gotten a boyfriend um, on Halloween. I had known him, but you know, we decided to start dating on Halloween. And um, my mom killed herself November 18th. So I met, so we started dating October 31st, and then my mom kills herself November 18th, so just 19 days later. And that was tough because that man that guy we stayed together for uh, about a, six months probably but he was a oh, super rough six months because how do you handle a girl that's 20 years old and her mom just killed herself so he had I felt bad for him because I was a mess because when I would drink I would just have these like I would just I would just lose it like I'd be fine we'd go out you know with friends and by the end of the night I would just be sobbing you know like, a, like uncontrollable um, and what happened was, so I'm trekking along, so my mom kills herself, and I go home for two weeks, because that's all the military allows, <laughs> even if your mom kills herself, you get two weeks. So I go home for two weeks, and then I come back, and they didn't want to say anything to anyone. Well, they asked me, they said, do you want us to say anything? Like, so my commander, like my immediate commander. So you have things in the military, you have flight, you have squadron, and then you have base commanders. Your flight is your, the smallest one, so that would be, you know, the person that's the, the most you'd interact with. Your, com your um, squadron is the big thing, so like, your flight, we had a couple hundred people. Squadron would be several thousand people, and then base, of course, you know, can be, bases can be huge, so this was Tinker Air Force Base. So, I had spoke to my flight commander, and we decided to not tell anyone uh, like the, my my co-workers, you know, because it was, I didn't need that much um, focus, you know, on me. Like everyone being like, oh, okay. So they just thought I went home and we just, you know, went on from there. Um, and I was, became an instructor. I had just finished instructor training before my mom killed herself. But I didn't really want to instruct. But I was like, well, I'll just dive into that because it was easier to focus on that. Wait, so, hold on, but, 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 um, so you became an instructor at age 20? 20, yeah. Now? It was way above my peers. What happened was I was, I was like, not, not to toot my horn, but I was kind of like the, what they call the stellar airman. I mean, I got airman of the year, um, I got honor grad in basic training, I got senior airman below the zone, which means, that's a big deal, that means you get, um, you advance before everyone else in your pay grade and your um, rank. So, it, and you get to get live off base before your coworkers. So senior airman's a big deal because that's the first rank that you can actually get before someone else. The other ones you just get automatically. That's the first time that you can get the opportunity to advance quicker than your peers, but only like one person gets the opportunity to get senior airman below the zone per year or per period, whatever it is that they do. I forget the period of how often it is. But I got that. 
And of course, that puts a big target on you. Everyone hates you, you know, when you get all these awards and things. I kept getting awards, and you're not liked by your peers that much. And then they wanted me to become an instructor. And so there was a lot of people that were not happy about that because they had been in longer than me and wanted to become instructors. And I particularly didn't really want to be an instructor because I actually liked my job. And the problem with being an instructor is you don't really get to do your job anymore. You just stand beside behind the student and you tell them what to do. Well, I actually loved doing my job because what my job was was an airborne surveillance technician. And what it was is we tracked planes in the sky and we would tell... Um, you know, we would find which ones were the enemy ones and which ones were the friendly ones so that we can identify to the fighter pilots. And I loved that. It was intense. It was fun. A lot of you listen to radios, it, and I was really good at that. And I just loved tracking and finding this stuff. Okay, I didn't even know I was on Periscope right now, you guys. I thought we were, this is why people go, how can you not know? You're, I'm like, no, I think that he's filming because he makes videos. He sets up all these cameras, and then he puts on a live, and I don't even know. Well, it's, it's, it's cool. You're I'm always glad. on camera. Yeah. Yeah. So that's what I'm saying. So I decided, they pretty much made me, yeah, so the difference in terms with the, other branches is, you know, you're stuck in the military. You can't get out of the military once you're in, like not easily, not even medically. Medically is like one of the slowest ways to get out of the military, like it, it takes forever. Like there's no way to quit to where you can just get out. Like it still takes forever. People have tried to quit, you still are stuck pretty much for your four year. I don't know if the guards like that, but anyway, so what happened, my mom killed herself and I was 20. I was in the Air Force. I had one year left in the Air Force because I was going to get, I was, my enlistment was four years. I joined at 17. And so I go home for two weeks and I come back and then um, they don't tell anyone because I didn't want them to. So I was very off, but people just didn't really know what to think. They're like, ah, you know, because I would I trying to not be sad all the time and everything would like make me ball. So I'd have to just be very, very careful to not think about anything while I was at work, you know. But people will ask silly questions without realizing, you know, things like when, like, just weird things come up, you know, like Mother's Day or a holiday. Oh, did you call your mom? And then little things like that, you might, like, just lose it at the last second. It was tough. But um, I did really well for, like, six months, oh, like, five months. Like, I just kind of trekked along. I instructed, and um, even though my mom had just killed herself, like, I was just still I mean I had to work I had to just function you know and then one day I was instructing so it's a big deal when you go on a flight for one thing during this time we were like minimum flights I was also the scheduler and we were doing a time where they'd kind of cut back on the um on the money they'll do that in the military and then you know you have less flights so it was very hard to get a flight and we had gotten my student uh, flight, you know, we would worked it all out, and then you do, the day before, you do mission planning, and it's a whole day thing, and it's a big deal, and it's a big deal for a student to do a flight, because it's, you know, nerve-wracking, you know, you, you, it's a pass or fail thing, you know, I mean, I can fail them, so they're nervous, and um, in, the, in the morning, it was like a, it was like a 3 a.m. show up time, too, so we, and the day before, you you have to, 12 hours before, you're not allowed to do anything. You got to make sure you're resting. It says, big deal, everyone preps for this thing. Go through the whole process with the base commander the whole time because he was going to be on our flight. So like I said, we had the flight commander. Now you have, not the base commander, the squadron commander to say he was going to fly with us this day, which he doesn't fly very often. And I had, my mom died now get eight, five months ago, and I've been flying this whole time. And um, so that morning, I don't know what happened. Someone told him. Because, like I said, no one really knew that my mom had died. And so he took me off the flight um, in that morning. He came in. We were, we were getting ready to go. And it was really embarrassing. He took me and my student because she couldn't fly without me. And it was super embarrassing because there's about 50 people in the room, 50 to 60 people. And he came in and he took me and my student off the flight. And he said the reason was because my mom killed herself and that I shouldn't be flying. But I was like, that was like five months ago when I've been flying. So he said I was like a, a flight risk, you know, that I need to be on suicide watch. But I was like, that was five months, and he called my roommate and everything, and my roommate was like, what are you talking about? Her mom died five months ago. If you want to put her on suicide watch, you should have done it right after her mom died. You know what I mean? So he puts me on, well, once they do that, you lose your flying status. If you get taken off by a commander in that sort of uh, method, so they, I lost my flying status, and, um, 
in order to get it back, I would have had to go through this whole process and see a specialist and all that stuff. And I was going to go into the reserves because I was going to get out because my sister wanted me to move to California. But I was going to get out and go into the reserves and do my job in the reserves. And I already had my first mission was going to be to Hawaii. I was excited. I was already signed up for it. But when he took me off that flight, uh, it took away everything. So I couldn't do my job at all. And so for the last um, six months, I couldn't do my job. I just sat around and they just messed with me. Like, it was awful. So they considered me a suicide watch person. So I was constantly having to have people watch me. Uh, which, you guys, I wasn't, I didn't, nothing happened. I didn't try to commit suicide. Like, this was because my mom committed suicide. Yeah, I was classified as like crazy basically or something. You know, and um, I still don't even know why, like, they were able to even do that because, um, I, I mean, it wasn't like a suicide attempt that occurred or anything like that to it. So I don't know what happened. They said someone had notified them that I was upset or something, you know. But yeah, I, I had a I Like I said, I would have emotional outbreaks with my friends because I was very upset. Like when we would drink, I would get upset. And so they said someone called, but I don't know. Um, I always thought that maybe it was my family um, because he, I remember when the, commander um he was awful to me he um he said that i tried to commit suicide and that's what's so weird i was like i don't even know what you're talking about because he's like why don't you think about your dad and sister and then i'm like how do you even know i have a sister so i felt like my sister man because she wanted me out of the military true and i also thought that one of my friends had had called to get and i asked him it was a guy but yes. I, I said did you tell them that I was suicidal or something. Cause someone had told them I was suicidal. That's how the whole thing happened. I don't know who told them that, which I wasn't. I mean, I have, in the past, I actually, as a young child, um, uh, my mom um, actually was gonna have us commit suicide when I was five. So I have a lot of, and then I actually tried to commit suicide when I was 18. So, I mean, I have, there, there is valid that like I can get depressed, but I'm telling you during this time I was not wanting to kill myself and I was not trying to kill myself. I was upset my mom had died like anyone would be. But so what sucked is like they used like the past things of like, well, you know, she has a history of this and her mom has a history. So then, you know, so she just, but what sucked is, um, I actually just, really really enjoyed what I was doing and that actually was really helping me and once they took me off the flight it made my life horrible and what they did was um they would just mess with me because I my car had broke and a lot of shit was going on during the time my car had broke down and I couldn't get it fixed it was a pain in the ass it was the front the car was a nightmare anyways thanks dad gave me this nightmare car he didn't give it to me he sold me this piece anyways I had a Nissan 300ZX. It was really cool. It was T-top red. My dad had sold it to me, and it had been an accident, so the thing just had, it was a nightmare. It was turned out to be a real lemon that my dad dropped on me. Um, but anyways, um, so my car was broken for a change, and I lived 30 minutes from base. And so what they would do is they they I would go into work, and I would just sit there, because they wouldn't let me do anything, because they thought I was. <laughs> The suicide watch was meant I just sat at work and had people watched me, which was great. That was real fun for like six months. So I sat there and then um, they would then say, okay, you can go home. You've been here long enough because someone didn't want to even sit there and watch me all day. So they would send me home. And so I'd get a ride from someone. I'd call everyone, hey, can you give me a ride? You know, whatever. Figure out someone to give me a ride back to where I lived. And then it's not joking within about half hour of being home they'd be like oh we need you to come back I'm like are you kidding like this would happen like and I'd even ask him before I leave are you sure I don't have a car if I leave now do you need me to come back later no 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 you're fine no 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 you're good you're good and then they did it to me like every day and um it was it was literally I I couldn't understand why they were like doing this to me and I developed like a twitch in my eye because of the anxiety because I would just sit there and I would just not understand like why they were being so awful. I mean, it was literally like they treated me 
like piece of shit. Like it was like they they I remember they even put me in a room and stuff. It was just awful. And I'm like, I'm not even trying to kill myself. I don't even my mom did. Why do I get punished because my mom killed herself? I mean, it's bad enough that I have to deal with the fact my mom killed herself. Now you're taking away my career. And they're punishing you for something that's not even related to you. Yeah. Just because, like, because you're related. Well, I guess it is. You're the only it was my mom. And so. So um, they made you feel. So they abandoned you, man. Yeah, and so then once and, I couldn't fly anymore, I decided uh, to not re enlist or not go into the reserves either because there was no point. Because um, I wanted to do my job, I didn't want to do the other jobs. I could have, yeah, gone to another job. Or I could have tried to get my flying status back, but they said it was gonna be like, it was gonna take so much time, and I was, I only had six months left, so I was like, forget it. So I went back home, to California. Well, it didn't make sense to anyone. Anyway. <laughs> I, I lived with a guy that a uh, roommate. He was, we had been roommates for like three years in the military, and he was like, she's fine. I mean, of course I was upset. Everyone, no, I mean, but it was like I was not a um, suicide flight risk at that point when they were saying I was. That's what it was irritating too because I was like, you know, I probably uh, was more at risk like five months ago when my mom first died, you know, and then they like, you know, because that's when I was the most upset, the most kind of adopted and gotten used to, you know, working and, you know, get, and I was like, oh man, and it sucked. It was, it was, it was just awful. It was embarrassing because they, for like the rest of my enlistment, you know, I had been like the seller airman and then I just had to sit there like a piece of shit for like the last six months and most people still didn't even know what was going on because they didn't want to tell everyone about my mom so it was just like and so I could tell people if but most of the time I didn't feel like talking to people at that point because it had gotten really and I didn't know who to trust I didn't know who had said something like who had said that I was suicidal because um, I felt it was either one of my friends or my family you know because I thought it was my sister because she didn't want me to stay in the military so I feel like she, he, because the commander didn't even know, and then out of the blue, he knew that month, like, I'd, he knew that morning somehow, or found out that night, because we had planned the whole day before, and he didn't say anything, he didn't know, and then um, it wasn't until the morning of, so someone had, like, tipped him off the morning of, and said, oh, this girl shouldn't be flying anymore, because her mom killed herself five months ago, and she's suicidal. So then... Um, I'm deciding to get out because now it's the end of my enlistment, which was September 24th, uh, 2006. And I'm doing my um, out processing um, uh, flight physical because we had to get flight physicals every year when you're a flyer. And um, they found out that I had lost half my hearing from the flight lines because of the planes, they were so loud and I didn't always wear the proper hearing. Because they, they didn't give us, okay, they gave the maintenance guys the nice big... Um, ear cover ones for the flyers they give us the little tiny ones to put in your ear and those I hate those things you know those little orange ones so I didn't do that and it doesn't really help that much we needed the big ones when you're on the flight lines and we had the nice Bose headset for our, but we should have put those on when we're walking around on the flight line but so I lost half my hearing and they said um, I could get disability but like at this point I just wanted out and I didn't know if that was gonna take even longer and I was so upset of what they'd already done so I was like man forget it they said I could have dis I lost half my hearing and they said I could have disability from the military but I didn't take it I don't know why I didn't it was just everything was so much was going on um, I was upset I didn't I was just done with it because it really upset me and there was part of me probably that I don't know just didn't. I I have a tendency to. Uh, I'm not someone that just wants free money. I kind of will be like, "Fuck you! I don't want your money," kind of thing. So I kind of did that with the whole stimulus thing, too. But I didn't think we qualified anyway. So I was like, "Yeah, fine." But guess what, you guys? So if you guys don't know, we're going to Panama. But we um, we've been trying. To, we just decided to go. Like it was like, okay, if you don't know why we're going to Panama. Well, we lived there in 2012 to 2013. And Jedi Rich's mom is Panamanian. That's what a lot of people don't understand. They're like, um, this isn't showing anything. His mother is Panamanian. No, we are not fluent in Spanish. <laughs> we speak a little bit. But um, anyways, um, 
we lived there in 2012 to 2013, and Jedi Rich's father um, bought some land on the Caribbean side. So we're going to go on to Panama City. So um, if you guys know about Panama, you know, there's kind of like two sides. If you probably, you probably don't know, but the Caribbean side is less habitated. And um, that's where they have some land. So it's like this just beautiful, you know, beaches with barely anybody. And that's where the land is. But when Jerry Rich's father died, Jerry Rich's mother is um, a little bit disorganized with <laughs> things. So, like, we literally don't have, like, the paperwork for the land. So we're going to have to go there and literally figure out. It's their land, but, like, we have to figure out how to... Um, you know, get all the documentation to uh, make sure, like, nothing has happened to it. Because it, no one has been there for, like, 20 years now. So we got to figure out that. We tried last time, but... but um, so that's the ultimate plan, is to hopefully get the land and live there. And we would... That would be... Um, for, for photography tours and stuff, it would be awesome. But, like, we would hope uh, to live really minimally, you know, like, live... Like, it, it'd just be awesome. That's our ultimate goal. But first, we gotta go to Panama City. But here's the thing. So, we did not think that we qualified for that stimulus check because, you know, with our job, we don't particularly, uh, we're not part of the system. <laughs> and, um, but Jenna Rich's mom just kept bugging us. She's like, no, no, everyone gets it. Everyone gets it. Just just sign up for something. I was like, all right, whatever, whatever. And so Jenna Rich finally signed up for it. And yesterday, I was look, I go, going to my account balance to check, and it's usually I thought I was expecting it to be less than $100, which is what it usually is in our account. And it was $2,500. And I couldn't believe it. And I was like, I started just freaking out because it wasn't, just about the money, the $2,500 is a huge amount of money, but it was that I knew we were going to Panama when I saw that come in because we've been like, okay, we need about 3000 for uh, uh, the, the, the plane ticket and um, the housing and then um, about food. We knew we about, need about 3000 just to kind of, just for that part, and then we want to save some more to live there for a minute before we get, you know, settled. And um, so that came in and we were like, oh my gosh, we can get our plane tickets. So it was so amazing, but here's the catch, you guys. We still haven't received our passports yet. So yesterday, we bought our tickets uh, for September 30th, because here's the thing. On October 1st, the rates go up on all of the flights and the hotels, because this whole COVID thing, you know, they've been cheaper right now, but they go up October 1st, and then here's the other thing. We actually have to start paying rent October 1st here. We've um, unfortunately not been able to pay our rent for um, the last couple months. We paid in the beginning of this whole COVID thing, and then it got to where we couldn't afford it anymore, and so we couldn't pay, and so we have like a huge debt here um, that's been accruing, and uh, unfortunately we're gonna have to leave it. We don't want to, but this is, became out of our out of our control with this um, shutdown. We've not been. I mean, you guys, this has been one of the hardest couple of months for me, Jerish. I mean, most people don't understand. Like when they they don't understand what it's like to not literally have food. We got to where at times where we didn't have food, we couldn't afford it. Like it, I had to wait. I had to ask people for money and stuff so I could go get us food. We were actually hungry. People don't get that because they don't understand hungry anymore. They they think. Um, I mean, because they have just endless amounts of food, and we can't just have any food because we eat organics and go, oh, well, hoity-toity. No, that's, like, super serious to me because that's, like, my whole existence is about healthy living, like, that saved my life, so I can't just go eat, you know, food bank food. I'm sorry, uh, I can't do that because I, my health is more important. <laughs> Not to death, I'm not impressed, I'm not amused, I'm not confused, I'm not to death. I'm a grown man business, I'm not in school. Put your hand down, youngin', this is not for you. 
on my jail, my feet with the Kanye, yo. Your name on the marquee, your name off the payroll. Style fresh, like, like I'm still a day, yo. And it's been like that since the day, yo. On more time than a Rolly or Seiko. Step on deck, your neck, or do what I say so. Get, get up or get out, get down. Get down. Get down. Shout out to my man Kelly Kwali, we on top, shout out, shout out, check it out.